Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bed Surgery at Ease. So today we will be discussing a case report on Ranula. Okay, Ranula is basically sublingual salivary cyst or you can say sublingual salivary mucosal. Okay, so in this video we will be knowing the case, how did it came and how it was treated, how the surgery was done and how it healed. Okay, all the details we will be knowing in this video along with some concepts. Okay, before going to the video, you know the formalities. If you like my content, you can subscribe to this channel and also you, will, you can follow in Facebook where I usually post photographical case reports and in Instagram you will get a prior notification when the video will come and also you will find different notes in different subjects which I have uploaded. This is my Twitter handle. Okay, let us go to the, our case report. Before going to the case report, you should know some surgical anatomy. Before going to any surgery, you should know and consider the anatomy first. Okay, so first here, you see salivary glands, most of them, all of them are paired, major salivary glands. This is parotid, this is mandibular, this one sublingual and here you will find the zygomatic. Okay, four major salivary glands, four pairs of major salivary glands. You see the parotid which opens up to the upper fourth premolar and the zygomatic which opens up to the upper last molar. And this mandibular sublingual, they have a common duct which opens just uh, adjacent to the frenulum. On the both side, you will find the opening. So this is anatomy of the salivary gland. Now let us know about the salivary mucosal. How many types? Majorly, you will find three types. Actually, there is four types. I will tell you which four types, which one is the first type. The most common one is the sublingual. Sublingual salivary mucosal. Okay also known as ranula the salivary mucosal in general is known as honey cyst but this one is known as ranula okay so this one is most common one you will find another type second one you can say it is cervical cervical this one is, is example of cervical you can see the swelling here the cervical swelling is cervical salivary mucosal and here you can say this is pharynx you can see here a swelling which is basically pharyngeal, the third type, pharyngeal, pharyngeal salivary mucosal. Okay, the fourth one is actually zygomatic. You will find this case very very rare, the zygomatic salivary mucosal. If you find this case and you have done this surgery, then you will definitely win gold medal in different conferences. Okay. Here is zygomatic, the swelling of zygomatic uh, salivary mucosal you will find at the base of the eye. Here in this portion you may find the swelling of salivary mucosal. Okay, so this is the basic concept behind the, the anatomy and the concept. Let us go to the case report. Okay, so you see minus 4 means day 0 is the surgery, before that minus, after that plus. Okay, on day minus 4 that is 4 days before the surgery I got a whatsapp uh, video regarding a case you can see here a very clear swelling you see this is the swelling at the base of the tongue just adjacent right hand side of the frenulum you see here this was the case this is basically sublingual cyst sublingual cyst or you can say sublingual salivary cyst so first i told the owner let us Keep the animal under antibiotic and anti-inflammatory for two to three days. Then after we will do the surgery. So after the three days of treatment, you can say the swelling is reduced. You see one more thing, if it is abscess or cyst or any kind of swelling like mostly the abscess and the cyst. If you will give antibiotic and anti-inflammatory therapy, you will see the fluid portion will be absorbed. You see here, if I would have opened this one, I might have got more fluid, fluid like matter. When I opened up this one, I will tell the surgical procedure also. When I opened this one, I found it jelly like. Similarly, in abscesses also, if you are giving the antibiotic and anti inflammatory therapy for a long period of time, you will see the fluid person will get absorbed, the pus will be incipitated, and when you will open up, you will find very, very thick pus. 
okay and that term is antibioma if you have recalling the first class of principle of surgery antibioma okay go check out the playlist principles of surgery so this was the case on day minus four four days before the case came and i gave antibiotic and anti-inflammatory for three days this is just day before the surgery now before going to the surgery we should know how the surgery is performed the surgery the the term for surgery is marsupialization marsupialization the exact term is marsupialization of sublingual salivary mucosae this is marsupial what is marsupialization you see here was a salivary cyst first understand here then you will understand this one you see this is a side view cross sectional view and this is a very top view when you will look the cyst from top view this is side view both of them are cross sectional okay here you see first side view the black color one is the mucosa the tongue mucosa and the inner white one is basically cystic membrane i already told you in a abscess cyst differentiation cyst has a membrane cystic membrane this is the content what you have to do you have to give a incision i will tell you how that is done give incision and this cyst you have to join this cystic membrane along with the mucosa here you have to suture this one so that it will get adequate drainage facility so that all the content will be excavated or it will go out understand it here on top view you see here is top view all is basically the mucosa of the tongue so you gave simply you give incision you enlarge it if it is small one if it is a bigger one then you can give a circular incision or you can say single incision then cut a circular piece of tissue when you uh, took out this tissue when you will take out this tissue you will see this black one will be the mucosa and the inner one will be the cystic membrane so you simply have to suture this in a round manner okay simply you are giving see if you related these two pictures you will understand how the surgery is performed here is the pictorial you can see the see these two membranes the, this one is mucosa the inner one is cystic membrane you see when they are sutured they become one okay they will heal and all the content which were earlier deposited here they can be excavated out or they can be removed out easily this surgery is known as marsupialization can you tell me another uh, condition in which the marsupialization surgery is done okay you think about it i will tell you in the last next this is surgery day zero okay day zero surgery this one you can see i gave a incision then i enlarged it because it was a very small one after antibiotic and anti inflammatory therapy it has reduced to very small one and then i did the suturing here you can see suturing and here this is slightly body but you try to see you see this you can see this rim okay see this rim see this rim okay you can see this is known as marsupialization i simply removed a piece of uh, the mucosa and along with the cystic membrane then i joined the inner cystic membrane to outer mucosa here there are sutures you can see you can see clear a rim okay this is a rim and this is the opening this is this marsupialization surgery okay this is very simple technique you should know it okay because, because uh, many a times very simple things we don't know and we think this is a very weak surgery nothing like that this is a very simple surgery okay so this is the photograph after 30 days day 30 after surgery you can see there is no more swelling here uh, this is actually video i will insert this video in the photo uh, in the video also you may find somewhere here like that okay you see here there is no swelling no more swelling and the owner gave the feedback that there is no chance of recurrence of this salivary mucosin you see many a times you will find articles regarding the marsupial surgery there are very less articles four to five may maximum this much of articles you may find regarding marsupialization surgery there is chance that up to 80 to 90 percent that it may not recur if it records what you will do if it records then you have to remove 
entire the mandibular and sublingual gland this gland entire this gland complex you can say you have to remove the mandibular and sublingual because surgically you cannot identify which one is mandibular which one is sublingual they are closely adhered only histologically you can differentiate it so you have to remove the entire mandibular and sublingual gland you see most of the surgery most of the mucosils whether the pharyngeal whether the sublingual or the cervical which are very common one mostly they are due to this glands trauma to this duct okay the mandibular salivary gland you see to remove this one first you have to identify this mandibular gland how to identify this mandibular salivary gland you see these two veins these two are very big veins this is lingua facial vein and this one is maxillary vein they join to form the jugular vein okay this is the identification mark where you will find this mandibular salivary gland you see for mandibular salivary gland some surgeons prefer the vertical incision while some surgeons prefer the horizontal incision it is up to you every uh, technique you see any surgery if he has a multiple techniques every technique has a pro and has a con okay so this is the method which you should know about if it is records then you can tell the owner it is time to remove this mandibular salivary gland okay and the gland complex will be removed out that is the radical surgery or called the radical therapy for the recurrence of the mucosils okay so this is all about the case uh, report regarding the ranula and to answer this question marsupialization you might have heard in pyometra pyometra there is marsupialization of uterus to remove the pus from the uterus though it is not very commonly performed but sometimes in your examination for student the external asked this question to me it was asked the for pyometra the parsipalization surgery is also performed for this pyometra okay so this is all about the case report regarding the ranula if you find this interesting please like this video and you can share with your friends juniors and seniors next will if you'll find any case report i will definitely bring it to you till then tata bye bye take care